Well, I hate to say it, but I've got you back on the tripod already. Because I broke that. I was trying to take the balanced arm off the wall to adjust the mount a little bit. I was trying to do it with everything attached to it. That thing's really heavy. And that broke. If it's got this bolt in here, you know, that's going to hold it all together. But when you take that out, and this is a tight fit so you're wiggling it out, the weight of it was just a little too much. Broke it. Kind of an edge case. I think I'm going to blame the idiot that was taking it down in one piece rather than the idiot that designed it. Though the idiot that machined it probably shouldn't have left a square corner in here. Should be a radius in there. But not much to do now other than make a new one. I look at this as one of those opportunities to make the changes that you wish you had done the first time. And after staring at this for a long time and redrawing some things on the computer, really I decided all I wanted to do was take a little bit off here. So I just kind of knocked that down with a file on the pattern. And so that casting came out pretty well. It's a little bit rough, a little bit of shrinkage around here. But overall, that's pretty good. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. So going back and looking at this, I did a lot more machining on this one than I really need to. Really what this needs is these faces cleaned up, a hole through here, these faces cleaned up, and these two holes, and a counter bore on there. But in order to do things from three different orientations, you need to be able to reference it. And I got to thinking that the easiest way to do this is going to be to put it on a fixture plate and just move the whole plate around. Problem is, I don't have one of those, so I've been meaning to make a little mini palette for a while, just haven't gotten around to it. So, I think this is going to be the excuse to go ahead and cast one. The surface finish on this is really terrible, and the lesson there is, if it's a hot sunny day out, don't try to make your molds out in the sun, because it dries out the sand and gets loose, and then when you get a little overzealous blowing it out, you blow out a lot of the sand. But this thing's getting machined on every side anyway, so I don't think that matters. Now, I've just been using whatever scrap I have laying around to remelt, not any specific casting alloy or even cast scraps necessarily. I know that's not the right way to do it, and I'm paying for it on the surface finish here. Even on the shaper, I'm not getting a good surface finish on this. One of you left a video link in the comments previously to Flowering Elbow doing a heat treatment. Guess where I left the link to that? Yeah, it's in the description. So I tried heat treating this, and we'll see if it's any better. The heat treatment was 350 degrees Fahrenheit about 180 celsius for about five hours i'm honestly not expecting much but yeah for science That was a roughing pass, and it's pretty lackluster, which is to say it lacks any sort of luster. Let's swap to the shear tool and see if we can get a better finish. So what did we end up with here? Well, the part that I milled, you can see a lot of porosity in it. Surface finish is nothing to write home about, but it's not terrible. Same sort of result on the side milled piece. This is not a good casting. It's not good metal. I knew that, but this will also be totally adequate for what I need. Now on the faces, this is the side I did before the heat treatment, and that's the side I did after. This is actually not terrible, but I think it had more to do with just doing very light cuts, like a thousandth, and then a spring pass across it without moving down any. Um, at best, it was guesswork anyway. There's a little bit of weird sort of rippling here on the very end of the stroke of the shaper. I think that's more the machine than the metal though. But again, for what I need, this is going to be perfectly suitable for a fixture plate. Before I do the finish pass on this face, I want to drill all my holes in here so that if it does distort up at all, I just knock it down nice and flat. 
since I don't have a DRO, I've got what the dial should read for each one of these written here, and then some lines. Give myself a fighting chance of getting these in the right place. I started getting into a pretty good groove here, just knocking these out. And the head on the mill was making a noise I'm not real familiar with, probably because I'm not used to running it this fast, but I was kind of looking up at that and... So every other hole is going to get reamed, every one in between is going to get tapped. And the boo-boo here I want to make sure gets reamed, so reamed, 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 tapped, reamed. We'll come back to this one later. I only want to ream these holes about three quarters of an inch deep, and since the old index doesn't have a quill stop, you got to improvise. through tapping 27 holes, which I did off camera because it's boring. I was bored doing it, you'd be bored watching it. Let's take a break from the tedium and try to fix this. Normally I would probably live with that, but I saw a video that Joe Pye did fixing a similar sort of thing. So I figured I'd give it a shot. I'm gonna do it a little differently than he did. If you haven't seen his video, you should go watch it because unlike me, he knows what he's doing. Since the mistake hole doesn't go all the way through, I'm gonna try to go for as close to a flat bottom hole as I can get. If you just plunge with an end mill, it cuts a little oversize, but this end mill's been reground, so hopefully it'll cut a little bit undersize. Now the 11 16 reamer. God, that's running out horribly. We're gonna go way slower. A little of everybody's favorite green goo. And a little plug that if everything cut the way it's supposed to, should be an extremely tight fit. And now back to the regularly scheduled tedium, I'm going to chamfer all of these holes. I went off on a bit of a quixotic quest with the shaper to get a good surface finish on this, and I never ended up doing it. Eventually I went to the fly cutter on the mill, and that worked out pretty well. It's not spectacular, you can see some porosity there. A little repair there is still visible, and that actually has a lot better surface finish. The key to doing a good surface finish on a piece like this is to not use crappy metal like this. Considering this, when I cut the feeder off, looked like that, I think that's pretty passable. This thing's set up to use quarter inch pins for alignment, and then it uses the same 5 16th clamping hardware that I made for my rotary table. But I do need a few more of these and make some that are longer. So while the shaper was making repeated attempts at cleaning this up, I was doing something else.
let's go an angle, eh, something like that, maybe. A little bit of cold blue, a little bit of oil. I think that's a pretty good collection of clamps I can use on the mini pallet or on the rotary table. Something I've been meaning to do for a while. Mini pallet's another project I've been meaning to do for a while. So, two good projects knocked out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember to subscribe. And until next time. Oh yeah, that. I filed this down, tried to keep this edge nice and crisp and parallel to this face. This is turning into one of those cases where no matter how many holes I put in here, it's not enough. And so the issue is that these are quarter inch pins, these are 5 16 bolts. For those of you that are metric, these are bigger than those. So I can't put the bolt in there with the, against the pins. So... Hmm... I want to get one in there. Bigger parallel. So a few years back my snowblower died. Just threw the rod through the side of the engine. And so, of course I stripped it of everything that was worth saving. All the bolts and nuts. And this is one of those things that came from that, from the motor. It seemed like it would be useful and didn't know what for. I think that should just about do it. I centered this up on the part visually. slower. That was overly ambitious and of course the part moved. Before I move this I'm going to zero my dial. Then I'm going to go and edge find it. And that way I know how far the center line is from the edge of the pallet. Yeah, I'll believe that.
Somebody's going to tell me that having the top of the clamp parallel to the axis of a round part like this is a bad idea because if it slips a little bit, the whole thing's going to come loose. And that's right, but for drilling down through there, I thought I needed the clearance. I could have gotten away with having another clamp here, but I'm going to add another one here for a little extra security. I'm using a ball nose end mill here so I can keep the radius down in the bottom of the corner. Eliminate the stress riser that failed the last time. I had to round over these corners a little bit, and these clamps are pretty much in the way. But it does fit together. Since I know how far it is from the edge of the pallet to the center line of the part, I can work out how far it is from the edge of the pallet to the side of the part. So it occurs to me I'm not going to be able to get a center drill down in here. It also occurred to me that I have the reference surfaces I need to do this the way I did it before, which I did before in other videos, so... Well, I hadn't really expected that to become a mini pallet video, but I think that was a pretty good not just how, but why. Show it in action, what it's good for. It was a lot less machining to do on this one, but it felt like a lot more moving of clamps. I don't know that it was necessarily easier to do it this way than the way I did it previously but I think the result is much nicer. I could leave a lot more material there since I didn't have to reference off this surface. Nice radius there. I think if I spent some time working out the optimal clamp placement for this, it would end up being easier. But I'm pretty happy with that. It's actually a pretty decent casting other than some shrinkage around here. I think I'm gonna put that back together. As far as the mini pallet itself, was it worth casting it? No, especially for one this size. It would have been easier just to use a piece of stock. If I had to do it again, I'd probably do it that way. I might even use a piece of steel or cast iron, just because this is going to get beat up. Other things I would do differently, I might ream these holes to be a bigger size than the bolts. I might still go back and do that. We'll see. I could also just make a little pin that has a little shoulder on it. Something like what I did for these one, two, three blocks. And that way I can just put bolts in if I have something registered up against the pins. Well, that's a couple projects that have been on the back burner knocked out. And another one finished up again. I'd say you should stick around and see this thing in action, but hopefully I won't ever show it to you again.